<laughs> Leticia, welcome to Free and TV today. I'm excited to be interviewing you in the group. Happy Monday. Where about you are? Where are you in the world, Leticia? Happy Monday, Amos. I'm in London, London, UK. Beautiful. Um, this part of my my picture in the background. I'm in <laughs> London. <laughs> Yes, and amazing. it's a very lovely weather today. It's absolutely amazing. Good, and you guys are like mid late afternoon there. So, so in London, Leticia, for those who have not met you yet, what are you up to in the world? If you were to introduce yourself and say, "My name is Leticia," and in one minute, this is what I do, what would you say? Because you do a lot of stuff. <laughs> I do, yeah, and I even for myself, I when somebody asks me, "Um, who are you? What do you do?" I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I start to stumble." I'm like, "I don't know which one to tell you." Um, so I, I'm, a, I would call myself a humanitarianist because I, everything that I do is surrounded around humanitarian work. So I have a charity that I run called Lit Space, and uh, with that organization, we are helping people from underprivileged backgrounds. And um, so we provide them with various types of education, self development, provide them with financial education as well. And we also um, provide them, those ones that are facing food insecurities with food as well. Um, recently, we had a project um, in the Congo where there were, well, there's a lot of displaced people due to some wars that are in the Congo. Um, not everybody knows about these wars, but there's wars that's been going on for years over there. And uh, I've, I've been able to provide food through the organization. I've been able to provide food for many families over there. And also a lot of them we found were complaining that they're very cold because they're living in camps. So we've provided them with blankets, things to keep warm. And also what we've been doing is I have a team over there who would go around and look at which women or well, now we're going to get into men as well. But we started off with women because we, when we started it, it was Women's International Month. And we would pick which women we see are showing leadership skills. And then we will provide them with um, with some materials to be able to get themselves back on their feet. So they'll be able to um, maybe learn to make pastry so they can sell in the local market or just sell to people around their area so that they can have some kind of um, financial means to get by for themselves. And um, not only that, but uh, we also provide children as well with um, stories of hope. So we have books in the in a- in the Congo, they speak French and other various, because there's many languages in the Congo, but the predominant language is French. So we have these books that are very Bible based and uh, just give stories of hope so that the children know, yes, even though they are going through these trying times, there is still light at the end of the tunnel and they still can push to be much more than what they are currently experiencing. And so that's great. And then with the organization, we also have um, a base in Nigeria where we're providing um, school school materials for the children there as well. There'll be backpacks with pens and notebooks and um, various different things, pencils and rulers, just things that they need for the schools. And in the UK, we're providing um, education. So we provide um revision classes for anyone who's going through their examinations um we provide financial literacy education and we do various projects where we will teach people especially the children because the children are the future and if you train them young then you know you're setting them up for success so we train them on sustainability so we'll take them we'll maybe have a project where we take them out into the wild and they observe and we teach them how to recycle effectively and just to think about the environment that they're living in and how to keep it well. Um, and uh, we're not just there, we're also in Angola. And in Angola, we're supporting widows who have been, well, they're elderly widows anyway, who are unable to work because they've already passed retirement age, but they have no one to support them. They have no family, no husband, it's just them. So we provide them with food to be able to get by. We work with local organizations um, like a bakery and um, and uh, a supermarket as well. And an orphanage, there's a young boys orphanage as well that we work with. 
and uh, we just help them with various training so the kids from the orphanage not only are they receiving food and support from us but they're also able to volunteer their time to support the widows as well so it's about developing the people to be able to help one another as well and provide sustainable solutions for um for themselves so that they can be become well what's the word become self-sustainable wow. and so the organization is doing quite a lot of things but that's just one organization <laughs> I'm not, when I tell you, um, I also am an ambassador in healthcare with the School of Bionatural Medicine. And again, that one is bringing quality healthcare that is affordable. It all, it's all private medical healthcare, but it's very affordable to those who are unable to afford regular private healthcare um, through this technology that we have that's able to scan you remotely from the comfort of your home. So with that, it's able to see absolutely every single organ in your body just through sound recognition. It's a very advanced quantum technology. And when I start to go to the nitty gritty of it, you're just going to be like, whoa, it's like it's, it's a lot of science. <laughs> science you, got a, it. you got a lot going on. And that's not all, right? There's other stuff you do. No, no, that's not all. I'm also a chaplain, um, a chaplain providing um spiritual advice and um, guidance and counseling to people who are going through trying times um and with that it's just about ensuring that it's not when it's not religious based um we're not in a religious setting to say you know you've got to be of this faith or you've got to be I'm, I'm from a christian background but the support that we provide is very much interfaith it's it's helping everybody it's not specific to a religion um and it's i find it very um rewarding because uh, you go into the hospitals and you're speaking to people and just giving them that knowing that everything's going to be okay and even if they have very terminal sickness it's just to have somebody close to you holding your hand and ensuring you that you know you can still find peace in any turmoil. Um, it really does help. And it I, I like to see that I'm making real tangible difference. And when you start to see the person who was feeling very defeated, very low, is now starting to, you know, feel some life into them and starting to feel very hopeful and just accepting the situation and trying to find clarity, then it you just see what a difference that you make. And for me, it's just, it's marvelous. It's absolutely marvelous. And I love it. Where did you I get the desire that. for all this? Where did you, as a kid, like, what made you want to do all this? <laughs> I, I had a pretty tough um, childhood. I I came from the Congo. I come from the Congo. And uh, already it's a, it's a country that's filled with a lot of conflict, a lot of turmoil, a lot of poverty. And then our family decided to migrate in the early 90s. We came to the UK just to seek a better life. And even with that still, um, we we were subjected to a lot of poverty as well. Um, parents didn't really know how to speak the language. And um, in terms of job, my, my mom didn't really, she was a stay-at-home mom. So we just had to really... It was a struggling time. Some of the things that other kids had, we didn't have, you know, and there were some trips that the school would arrange and we couldn't go because we couldn't afford it. You know, there were things that the other kids would have and they come and knock on your door and you say, let's go play out, but you can't really participate because you didn't have the same things that they had. So when they're all riding bikes, going around and you don't have one, you're, you're left out. When they're all skating or playing on their skateboards you don't have one so you're left out so you know it was quite difficult but I always had this thing in me that said you know what I need to make a difference and I need to take my family from where we are to somewhere different and this is the spirit that I've always had in me so I've tried various different businesses in my lifetime um, I was in school and trying to make money I would be hiding in a corner just plaiting people's hair for extra money just so I could be able to afford even um, lunch because we used to get given like five pounds a week lunch money and that don't get you nowhere 
it really doesn't get you nowhere. And so I had to find a way to be able to support myself. And so I started just, uh, I learned how to braid hair and all the kids in the school be like, yeah, come and braid my hair too. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. But then we have class. I'm like, okay, how do I do it? So we have to hide. So I would be bunking. I'll be in the school, but I'll be bunking the lessons um, just to be doing somebody's hair just for, for the cash because we needed it, you know. And when I reached the age where I was able to get a job at 16, I was like, yes. I felt like I was free now. I was like, yes, I need to get a job so I can support myself and be able to do things for myself. And even when I was doing that, I remember I was having a conversation with this lady and we were doing the same job and she was like in her 50s. And I remember when we were talking and she was complaining about her pay and our pay was very close, very, very similar to each other. And I got this chill in me and it just shook me and I said I cannot be at that age in this situation to be sitting next to a child and be on a similar pay to them it really it was like a light bulb moment and it made me scared I said I need to find a way to help myself and then also try to get other people out of that because you can see how it becomes a cycle you live a hard life and that's all you know and that's what you pass on to your children. So I just had that thing in me that said I have to break that chain. And so I I would try various businesses um, at 24. I then, because I start, yeah, there was a period where I started also making clothes. So I would design clothes and make it and then people were like, yeah, make me something as well. So I was like, okay, I'm doing really good with this. So I started a fashion business. And then... Um, that didn't go well because um, again it's about the mentoring that you get and the, you know the people around you the support that you have and I just didn't have that support because I was coming from a place where you know the people that I was looking up to didn't really know much about business you know and you can't blame them they just they they tried what they could to make a living and so that didn't work out and then I tried um, another business in <laughs> it's very different it was like ice cream but it was dairy free ice cream. And and then I started getting stores in the in the shopping malls. Um, so it, it was like hopping from one shopping mall to another, just getting the stands, um, the pop up stores, and that was going good until the business partner that I had just became a whole different person, and I just said, you know what? Instead of getting into any conflict, or whatever, because I've always been the kind of person that just wants to keep the peace. I will just take myself out of it just to avoid any further issues. And I did. Unfortunately for her, she didn't carry on because I was actually the backbone of the business. Um, <laughs> I stepped out of it. And but then there, and then I went back into the world of work. I was working for somebody, but I was just never satisfied. Never satisfied. And so I said, I have to find my own path. And so I did. Now I just do so many things. <laughs> So many things. And uh, sometimes I wonder how I cope, but I guess the good Lord is keeping me, keeping me going. Well, you <laughs> clearly you're wired for it. You're wired to, it's amazing your story of, as a kid, you're hungry for more. You're braiding hair in the hallways, ditching school <laughs> to take care of yourself because you're like, someone's got to take care of me. And then, so it's all sorts of creativity and resilience. And what's next for you then? What? What's the rest of this wow. year going to bring? <laughs> you know, they say the sky is the limit. I think we could go beyond the skies. We could go into a whole other planet. Um, <laughs> but um, um, what's next for me? I, I have a lot of big ideas. And um, if I tell you, you're going to think this woman is bonkers, right? But for me, it's um, I, I want to build homes for these people who have been displaced towards. There's millions of them millions of them and they living in camps where they literally have no it's not even it's no shelter because some of the some of the tents that they live in are ripped and when the rain comes it goes inside and everything the little that they have is damaged and they just these are people who 
some of them were farmers, some of them had small businesses here and there, just trying, you know, in a market, trying to make a living. And then the unrest came, they had to flee. And for me, it's like, I can see how that really damages a person's mental state and it causes depression. And it, it's even worse than the depression that you might think people face here. I mean, I can't knock anybody's problems, no, because Lord knows I've been through a hell of a lot myself as well. But when you think about the fact that even through those severely trying times that I had, I still had shelter, I still had food, I still knew where I would get my next meal. You know, I just need to open the fridge. But when you've got people who've lost absolutely everything, and those are the bare minimums. And how can somebody aspire to be much more in life when they don't even have the bare minimum? So my my next step is really to try and help build um, homes, build vocational colleges as well to help train the young kids on skills because there's a lot of um, skill gaps in a lot of places. And I'm not just talking about, you know, in Africa. Um, here in the UK, yes, there's um, you know, they may get some support, but just we need to do more with them to be able to help them understand that they can be so much more. Because a lot of the troubles that we go through in life is just because we ha we don't have that support, and sometimes you just need somebody to believe in you, and that can make the biggest difference. Oh but yeah, I have, I have very many, very many plans for the future, and. It's hard to lay it all down, but my my joy is to be able to say that I've been able to help umpteen millions of people in the world and I've made a true difference. I think that that's really my joy, to be able to say on my bed when I'm like 155 years old, to say, you know, I actually made a real difference in the world and it's tangible difference that I can see. That, that is how I want to end my world, really. Wow. Leticia, thank you. You're already making a difference here today, this morning or this afternoon in UK. Thank you for being on ENTV today. After the interview, please drop any links in the Facebook post. In the comments section, you have to direct people to wherever you want to direct them to. Uh, your story is inspiring. I'm going to tag a couple of people that I think should interview with you and their groups. They also have groups they can interview you in. And um, I Thank just want to you. go to you for, we're going to wrap here in a sec, but closing thoughts, closing remarks. You're very inspirational, Letitia. Thank you. Thank you. My closing remarks, and I say this to a lot of people, no matter what you go through, don't let anyone take anything from you except notes. They need to grab a pen and paper and take notes from you. See how you're living. See the difference that you're making, the moves that you're making, and take notes for themselves. Don't let them take anything else. <laughs> I, wow, I love that. Take notes. Make them take notes. Exactly. Okay, exactly. ENTV today, please reach out to Leticia. Let her know what you appreciate about her in this in the comments and connect with her. She'd love to connect with you. Leticia, we'll keep chatting offline now. But thank you for being here, Leticia. This has been this has been really, really great. It has. Thank you for having me, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>